It's a celebrated play about Māori Chinese love affair that grows amongst the rows of potatoes, uprooting the family's lives for generations. And to tell us more about the mooncake and the kumara, please welcome to the cafe its writer, Mailin Tapuya Hansen and director Katie Wolf. Yes. Thank you. It is so wonderful to have you guys in the studio. Um, there's not many pieces that actually document the Māori Cantonese connection, is there? No. no very in few. Fact, yeah, in fact, there's not many pieces that are set in the 1920s when this play is set. Um, and this is one of the first stage plays to represent Māori and Chinese. And it's stage. inspired by your grandparents, is it? Yeah, yeah. So my um, grandfather was from Guangzhou, uh, my grandmother from Waikato, and um, she was 16, he was 25, and uh, they met on a market garden. And uh, yeah. So it's inspired by, so it's not the true story of their love. It's, it's just sort of... No, it's my imagination because I don't really know what happened, you know. Um, and they didn't really speak English to each other um, that much. They, wow. Yeah, I mean, that was their shared language, but um, my grandfather spoke Cantonese and my grandmother spoke mostly Māori. And so. Um, it was obviously some yeah. sort of connection that worked well for them. Yeah, obviously. I mean, they had 13 children, so... Wow. <laughs> Very well, then. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and, and, a, lot, and a lot of work in the garden, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, Katie, this must be an incredible project to work on. Quite a, a really important part of New Zealand's fabric, I guess. Yes. Those developing roots way back then. And, and mm. often, as um, uh, Mayland just said, it's, uh, we don't really hear much about the 1920s. So mm. it was no, really we think exciting. about the gold rush. But yes, we don't the think gold about rush them. and the war years, the 40s. But how mm. often do you see New Zealand pieces set in the 1920s and that was really amazing. There's still a transition between sort of Victorian dress into modern dress. Yes. Māori yeah. was still wearing their traditional wow. dress crossed over into um, Pākehā dress. Yeah. So all that sort of stuff. So the imagery itself is really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And, they're, yeah. and they're quite poor as well. So oh, the poverty um, was yeah, really just extreme. Just so much poverty yeah. at that time because it was, you know, the depression leading mm. up to the depression. You've got, you've got on the show, uh, on this show, you have English, Māori, and Cantonese. All the languages are spoken on stage. I am just trying to work out how this actually works. It's, well, well, the first thing we did was make sure that we, we cast actors who are fluent in all the languages. Yeah. So, and the thing is, if they know what they're saying, then the audience does. And a lot of the scenes are about misunderstanding. And it's very, very funny. <laughs> and they are my favourite scenes when the Cantonese and Māori and English is flying all over the stage. And, and then, of course, as the play develops, the Māori characters are learning to speak Cantonese and the Cantonese mm. characters are learning to speak Māori and English. So then it's this beautiful sort of fluid flow of language. Mm. So mm. it's, and it's really lovely. And no, not one person, and this is its third season that we're having, has ever said to me, I couldn't understand yeah, it. No. Everyone, because yeah. they understand the misunderstanding, which is yeah. really interesting. Yeah. yeah. And Maylin, what did your family think of the oh play? Oh my gosh. So I've got a huge family. I've got 55 cousins. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> 21. 10 uncles. And, um, but I've also got a family of relations from China and they now live in New Zealand and they came to the play and they were the ones I was most worried about um, seeing this thing because it's their lives yeah. Yeah. on stage. But they came to me afterwards and they, you know, tears in their eyes and they said, we really loved it. Um, the one thing is they weren't speaking the Cantonese from the village. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. They were speaking Malaysian Cantonese and of course I don't know that. And, and, and Katie, you know, as, as a director, what do you think we can take from, I guess, sitting now looking at what's going on with Chinese-New Zealand relationships and the relationships from back then? Is there something we can take from this point? Oh, I think a lot of, there's a huge takeaway from it because there's so much you read about, you know, immigration and immigration's been happening for a long time in this country. Mm, yeah. And this mm. play talks about how all the characters in this play did face a lot of adversity in terms of racism and they all the characters that in this play chose to move forward and they made really positive de decisions about how you live together with difference. So I think it's a really, oh. uh, there's a huge takeaway Sounds cool, in that. I can't wait yeah. to see yeah. how it all yeah. melts together. Yeah. Come, come and practice yeah, my very, very average Cantonese. <laughs> Maylin, Katie, thank you so much. <laughs> the Mooncake and the Kumura Plays is part of the Kaimo Festival in Wellington and Matariki Festival in Auckland.